for a couple hundred bucks, just it's so much easier than all right. the other systems that yeah. I, I just don't see an alternative that makes any more sense. Well, especially if you do have a, a flight risk, you know, um, I mean, I, yeah. I, I yeah. do, one of our things is we do recommend microchipping, but you're absolutely right that um, right now we, we're working on a program about that because the problem with the microchipping happens to be that um, people don't remember to update their information. So, I mean, just this week I've had, I think, six microchips on found dogs and they were all either unregistered or outdated um and you know we'll spend the time to work on that but you know having this other um system in place or whatever you want to say this other product in place on your pet is is really a good deal you know <laughs> um it really is. something yeah, for people to think about yeah. Yeah. We that's exactly right. Like we I absolutely advocate chipping always. Do as much as you can with your vet, local societies, humane, ASPCA, anything you can, but in the end, you know, you're doing what everyone else does and you know, if you want to go above and beyond for, you know, just a little bit of money, Mm -hmm. you know where your dog is. And then the nice thing is it builds a network with your friends who have pets as well. And you can, you know, they might want one and then you can connect them there. It, you can do street view. We, we had a, a demonstration dog the other day at a pet conference for um, uh, groups of disabled people that were using the, the helper dogs that were just fantastic. And they were so lovely. And they never get lost because they know their way back. But just mm -hmm. in case, it's sort of a it's that peace of mind for everyone who has a pet right. um, to, to keep track. And then you can look in real time on, on Google Maps and you can see the street view. And our dog kept popping up in the hotel uh, <laughs> that the, the conference was in. So it was very funny. We were always finding her in different rooms that she had walked to because they, they opened the hotel to the pets. So, yeah. Um, it's just it, it's just a great, really functional piece of equipment. Yeah, I mean, it does sound like it. Um, so let me see. Okay, you had mentioned uh, when we were talking a little bit of, um, ago that there that you're also starting something with this um, to to help with like some sort sort of a helping health app or something for the pets. Yeah. So. Um, veterinarians have voiced their opinion that it's really, and you can imagine this makes sense if you're a pet owner, you go to the vet often and they find problems and, you know, it's always point of sale. It's always right there. Oh dear, you know, Lily in my example has a tumor on her kidney and suddenly you're inundated with all of these new medications, you know, new um, you know, visits every week for the first three weeks and then thousands of dollars are flying out the window when actually her, my own dog's condition was treatable uh, at a much easier pace, much more regulated simplicity. If I would have had some sort of health device, it would have indicated her eating had changed, her water intake had changed, you know, her activities, her health activities had changed. So we have a team that we're working with, Hopefully, uh, it literally last week just came to fruition, but we're looking at Notre Dame and IUI and in Indiana. Um, we're going to build internship partnerships with their technology departments to find ways to modify our current device to track health data. And that's like version 3.0. Like our entire goal is to keep making this better and better and better. It's only a year old and it's already pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. uh, and affordable from where, where we sit in the market. It's an Indiana company. It's kind of fun. It's local. Um, a lot of pet owners in Indiana, but a lot of pet owners worldwide need this product. And because it works on a cellular level, the possibilities are almost endless. It's just right. um, a matter of, you know, fitting them into that collar size device is fun and tricky. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> well, the other thing I think of while you're um, talking about the the tracking device is the amount of pets that are 
often lost uh, when people are on vacation because I live near an island that is a big vacation area for people and a lot of them bring their pets and we just had one found yesterday on the island and it had no ID nothing and it's an older dog little dog and now it's sitting in the shelter you know so for people traveling too, something like uh, your your device is an awesome thing for anybody traveling even um, anywhere I suppose that you know they lose them in a rest area and that's the biggest nightmare ever so to travel with that yeah. on and is a great um great idea also i mean some people don't like to keep collars on their pets but even if they got it and used it for you know if they had a pet sitter or if you know they even have a babysitter in the house and just anybody different or if they have company at their house just any kind of situation where it's different and they don't want to keep it on all the time they could just put it on although they should keep it on all the time you know but yeah um but you're right you don't have to have it on you know 24 7 um right. obviously you know when there are chances of of a run or a breakaway um you know you could even just strap it on every time you walk i okay. do that with my dog i grab the i grab the pickup bags you know and i have the routine and we go on a hike and uh you know that may be the only time i put it on her and that's yeah. fine um it's still there in case the leash breaks or Right. Somehow she wiggles out of the harness, which happens all the time. And my dog is 15, and she can still outrun me by probably <laughs> two miles before I can catch up to her. So, yeah. Well, you um, have to think about it, too. I, like I love it. Yeah. The, and just thinking about um, one or two days in the shelter here could be over $200, you know. So that alone, just one time being picked up and brought into the shelter can cost more or almost as much as the device and the whole year's worth of, um, coverage basically, you know? So so there's, there's, yeah, I mean, there's just so many good reasons why this to me sounds like a really, um, I'm definitely going to check it out. That's for sure. (laughs) Because, um, you know, my group has over 24,000 people just in two counties here. And I'm always talking to the Lost Dogs of America people. And um, it, it would be interesting to, you know, find out exactly, you know, have it in my hands and check it out with my dog. Now, does it come in different sizes or is it just all uh, one size, basically? It's one size to fit standard collar uh, millimeter width if that makes sense. So it can okay. kind of go up to the, the larger, um, you know, it's just a clip on. It's almost like a, if you imagine a belt buckle okay. that, that it doesn't, it doesn't fasten anything. It just slips on. Mm-hmm. And then we sell, um, because of the canine unit, uh, police issued pieces, we realize that, you know, they're going through probably a lot more than your average, uh, Yorkie runs through, but, Right. We added on a, you know, like a combat safe mechanism that's basically a, just a hardened, but really inexpensive piece that then that you can strap on to almost anything and mm-hmm. keep the device in that. It'll work the same way. Um, and we're trying to actually, you know, like I said, it's only a year old. So our ultimate goal is to make the device as strong as possible because a lot of people are talking about, you know, these little devices work great on 20 pound dogs when you have a hundred pound dog that likes to wrestle or etc you know it's the device is just going to get destroyed right and then waterproofing comes in if the two-way communication the microphone we're, we're working on all of these things but as it stands right now as a general product for the general consumer pet owner lover situation it's a great product uh, mm-hmm. when you get down to the specifics our goal is to design more health related data collecting for veterinarians. It'll save you money in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, and you always have a way of knowing where your dog is. So if you're at home, you have a pet walker or grandma or mom comes over to walk the dog. In my case, my mom is a wonderful, amazing woman, incredibly strong, but my dog is, stronger than my mom my wife and everyone and i can barely hold her when she sees something she wants and i've used it 
and it worked. And it works. You know, I knew exactly yeah. where she was in the woods down a hill. And instead of scrambling, putting up posters, I just walked over, called her, said sit, and I walked up to her and walked her back. Hmm. And that was it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we're already out of time. This went by so quickly. So I'd like you to be able to tell people again, like how would they go about finding your product online or could reach out to you if they had any questions or what, how could they do that? Yeah. So um, I'm happy to take direct calls. Like I said, we're a nice little startup. Uh, we work with a lot of interns at Indiana University, Purdue University, uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, my cell phone number, honestly, is 317-501-2445. And then our website is www.furtreeb.com. And you can find out more about uh, the product there, order it all those things, um, ask us questions, info at fertrieve.com. Okay. And we're happy to, um, we're happy to talk in person. Um, we have great demos online. We're constantly creating videos. Um, it's just a fun, really grassroots company based on a really good premise of protecting pets uh, who, you know, you truly love. The, yeah. the baseline is love. That's our whole goal. Right, Protect right. Your love. That's right. Well, Robert, I really want to thank you again for being with me today and sharing all this imp information. Um, I'm definitely going to check this out. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and we'll talk further and uh, you can test market it for us okay. and, and see what you think firsthand. I would love to. All right, everybody. So until next time, please remember that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives. So be sure your pet is microchipped and wearing its ID tags and hopefully getting a fur tree for your pet. Uh, I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this has been Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Thanks for joining us today. And until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.